So this is gonna be part two of this Beats animation right here. We've been making these earbuds. If you haven't already seen part one where we do the modeling, check it out. But yeah, this is gonna be part two where we finally do our animation and then set up our materials and render this out as a final product. As always, these will be up on my Patreon. Check that out in the description below. And you can also support me by using my Skillshare link where you can sign up for free for one month. And I have a ton of awesome Blender content on there. So don't skip out on that. That's all in the description below. So now in part two, I think we're gonna start with our animation. So we've got all our little different components that make up our um, little ear pods over here. So let's go shift A. I think we're gonna add in, let's go with an empty and make it a cube. And let's go control I or command I to inverse to grab all the rest of the stuff. And let's go S to scale it down a bit and then go G and move it over here. Maybe S to scale it even a little bit smaller. So right here in the middle of a cube as much as possible and then holding and shift select the empty and then go control P or command P and then go object, keep transform. So now if we grab this empty, everything will go along with that. We're also gonna go A to select everything and go shift D to duplicate and X and move it over like so. And let's go A to select everything and go G, Y and move it. So they're kind of both sitting in the middle here like this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here to our timeline. Let's give ourselves 120 frames to work with. And let's come to frame one. And on frame one, let's go into our front of graphic and let's grab the first empty here and let's double tap R and just rotate it and let's get a nice starting position. This is gonna kind of be the shot that shows us what it looks like from the front. And let's grab this guy over here, double tap R and let's kind of position it in a way where it really shows off, um, it shows it off from the back maybe like this. So that looks good. And then holding and shift, we're gonna select both of these empties and on frame one, we're gonna go I and insert a location and a rotation keyframe. And then we're gonna grab that exact same keyframe over here and go Shift D to duplicate and drag it over to frame 120. So if you just click on both of them, you can see they both have a long hold keyframe like this. But what we wanna do is we wanna grab the first keyframe, let's enable our auto keying and come to 120. And let's press N to bring up our properties and let's go to item make sure we have that still active, the empty over here on the left. And we wanna rotate it on a local X, okay? But, uh, so make sure on 120, we can see here, this just so happens to be the random value here. Let's just left click. Let's click next to it and let's just go plus and let's type in 360 and hit enter. And now automatically it's added that in for us. So now this is what's happening. It's on the local axis going uh, extra 360 degrees like that. So let's come to frame 120, let's grab the next empty and let's come over here, but this time it's in a negative. So let's left click, click on it here. And this time we're gonna go plus, but we're also gonna go brackets and inside those two brackets or um, yeah, whatever you call those things, we're gonna go negative 360 and then we're gonna press enter. And now it's negative 403, which just so happens to be the value. It might be a different value for you, but as long as we're adding those values, and now we can turn off auto keying because it's already added it in. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, this is what we're gonna see. Essentially, it's gonna start, end and start in the exact same position, but also let's just hold and shift and select both these empties. Drag over the keyframes here and go T, and let's just make that linear. So it's just a linear constant um, animation like this. We don't want any easing in and easing out. That'll really kind of kill the the, seam, the looping seamlessness of it all. Like we want it just to be a continuous um, linear flow. Okay, so make sure to save as you go. Now we're gonna go Shift A, let's add in a plane. G, Z, let's move that guy right under here. We wanna make sure at no point do these guys intersect with that plane. So maybe down just a little bit more like this. Then tab into edit mode and go S to scale that plane up about this big and then go S, X and just scale it nice and long like this. Then turn off proportional editing and let's go to our edge select and select the back edge. And let's go into our right orthographic view, G, Y, move it back a bit. Go to your vertex option if it's easier and then go E to extrude and Z and extrude up like so. And then E to extrude and Y and extrude back about this much 
And then in your right orthographic, you can go E to extrude and keep extruding just a few times to kind of make something that looks like that. And then right click, go shade smooth. And now let's go to our modifiers, click on here and let's just type in bevel, give it a bevel modifier and you can bring the amount down, bump up the segments and now we've got a nice kind of bevel here. And I'm also just going to grab maybe this front edge here and just go double G just to slide it back about here and then go E to extrude and Z just to bring it down like so. Just making a stage. I'm going to tab back out, shift A, let's just add in a plane, move this plane back on the Y, S to scale it nice and big, S, X, and then R, X, 9, 0. And you guys kind of get the idea here. We're just adding this kind of like backdrop running here. Okay, now let's go into our front view. Let's go shift A, add in a camera. Let's go to our camera settings, give it a focal length of 140. And let's go G, Z and move it back to about here and then press zero to go into camera view. And we might have to go G, middle mouse button, just zoom it out just a little bit more. So this is up to you, but I like to have it nice and close like this. And let's then go shift A as well and add in another empty, but this time we're gonna add in a sphere. We're gonna go G, Z, move it forward a bit as to scale. And now in camera view, let's grab our camera, go to our camera settings and enable depth of field. Let's come to the drop down, get that little eyedropper and then select that new empty. And that'll later give us a focus point for the camera as well. Okay, so now make sure to save as you go. Now we have that out of the way. You're gonna to want to go to the internet or even just go to the link in the description below. And the link is gonna be this Polyhaven concrete material. And this is what you're gonna see once you click on the link. And you're just gonna go ahead, you can change um, the resolution, but it's gonna download it by default as a Blender file. It's gonna be inside of a, a zip file. So you're gonna extract the zip and inside of there is gonna be a blend file. That's all that matters, okay? So extract that somewhere on your computer once you've downloaded that file, make sure you know where it is. And then get back into your scene, make sure to go to your render settings and then change the render engine to cycles and change it to GPU if you have a GPU. And then you're gonna to go to file and you're gonna to go to append. And I already know where I extracted that zip folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it. Um, so it might be a different location for you, but it's just a concrete material. So it's just the concrete material. I'm gonna then click on the blend file inside of that extracted zip. And then I'm gonna to go to the material and then just click on concrete. In this case, it's just a concrete floor. But um, I, it might, I think it's the same as this one I'm providing in a link, but either way, um, you, it's gonna be a concrete material. And you can pick from some of these other ones as well if you wanted to go something different. But as long as you have a material appended in, then you can go and select this floor, go to your materials properties, come to the drop down, and you should see that appended material. And then tab into edit mode with this floor, A to select everything, and just press U and go unwrap, tab back out, and now if you go Z and you go material preview, you can see we have this concrete material on the floor. So before we go into our rendering, let's just go over to our um, render settings. Let's just change the max sample to something like 70 for now. And let's go shift A, let's add in a light. It's gonna be an area light. And in our front view, we're gonna move it over to the side. R to rotate it. And let's go to our light properties and let's give it a strength of 3000. And let's bring the size way up like this. And I'm just gonna move mine over to the side like this. There we go. Then we're gonna go Shift A, add in a plane and move it over to the other side. Scale it up, RX90, RZ90, there we go. Like so, and just have it off to the side. And then with this one, we're gonna give it a material. I'm gonna come here to the base color and click on the value here and actually change it to five. And you can actually go above a value of one if you manually type it in. That's gonna give it a really high um, albedo. So it's gonna bounce a lot of this light back. So if you now go to our front uh, camera view and you go control B and drag over the camera, you can go Z and go rendered. And now we have that nice lighting bouncing back here, but you can select your light. And in this case, I might even go up to 5,000 with the strength. And another thing you can do, this is optional, but you can go to your world settings and under your color here, you can give it an environment texture. Um, that's something you can do. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do that. Go to grab one, but that's optional. You can just stick to lights if you want. 
And then I'm just gonna give it a strength of something like 0.5, but that's also gonna depend on your HDRI. If you wanted to as well, you could just use the default sky texture that comes in Blender as well, that's an option. But now I have that, and what I'm gonna do is maybe just select this back part of the floor and just delete it like that. And then just kind of grab this back plane and give that a material and then make it much darker. There we go, and that's looking really good. Okay, but you can you can stage it however um, you wanna stage this, but that's kind of what I'm going for. And I'm gonna grab this light here and I go Shift D to duplicate it, put it at the back here and rotate it down a bit like this. And now we have some nice lighting coming from the back here as well. But the thing we really wanna work on here is the materials on our pod. So let's select one of them. Let's go into our shading workspace. Go into a camera view and let's go Z and go rendered. Now I'm just gonna go control B and limit the rendering to one of them, just so we can see here. And I'm gonna click on, on the main body, go to the materials property, and this is a red one material. So let's come here to the base color and make it red, a nice kind of red, and I'm gonna make it quite saturated. And if you want to, you can go shift A, search and get a noise texture. You can plug the color in to the roughness here and then go shift A, search and get a color ramp and place it over here. And then just kind of drag these two values together, bring up the detail and bring up the roughness and kind of just change these both to kind of like a sort of grayish um, kind of color. And then with that going into the roughness, you can see it adds a bit of roughness, but I want it to be a little bit more matte. So I might have to just make these values lighter to get that result. And I think that's looking good. Just adds a little bit of randomness to the roughness, makes it just look a little bit more realistic, but a very simple setup like this will do. Then let's grab these little metal discs. Let's just go and drag up the metallic and make it a little bit darker in the value. And that's looking pretty good. Remember we added the placeholder materials in part one and then let's just go to frame one <clears throat> just so we can see this um, bit over here we're going to grab that and that was a separate shiny red material let's just give that a red and let's just bring down that roughness make it more reflective like so make it a bit darker in the value and then let's grab that um, letter over here and let's just give it a material and let's just make it fully white and that's it. And now if we go control B, let's just limit um, the rendering to only the camera. Now both of these have those materials that we added in part one, but we've just made them look better now because those were only the viewport display um, colors. But now let's grab our camera and let's go to our camera settings. And remember we added that little focus object. Now if we bring the f-stop down to 0.5 and we go into render view, we can see we've got a nice soft focus in the background. So if we turn off depth of field, you can see the difference there. You can bring it down even lower, it's something like 0.3, um, but just keep in mind, you wanna wanna adjust this empty as well a little bit, just till it's all just perfect. But I like having that nice shallow um, depth of field with these sort of things. So now let's make sure to save and let's go render and do a test render. And here we have it, it's looking really cool, but let's close this and go to our compositing. And then let's go to use nodes. And then we can go shift A, search and get a viewer, plug the image into the viewer. And I'm just gonna connect these two cables together like that and press V just to zoom back. And now what we can do is we can go shift A, search and get a lens distortion. Let's make it 0 0.04 and over here 0 0.03 on the bottom. And let's click on fit and now we have a little bit of lens distortion as well i might even bring the um, dispersion up to something like 0 0.07 um, yeah that's looking really cool but you know maybe that's a bit too much it's completely up to you how much you want to add but just having that extra little detail there with the compositing really kind of makes it look cool so now let's go back to our layout and if you want to render this out as an animation you can go to your output click on your output folder Select somewhere in your desktop and there's a ton of options here. If you wanna do PNG sequences and then composite them together, that's up to you. But for now, I'm just gonna go with FFmpeg video 
go to the encoder and let's make the container an mp4 make sure to save and now if you go render and you render animation it'll render this out as an awesome looking final result so i really hope you guys have enjoyed this um, definitely support me by going to Patreon. All of that's in the description. You'll also get access to this final um, file as well on Patreon. And this is a really good way of, you know, like you getting something and me getting the support I need to keep making this content. So I'll see you guys next time and thank you for watching this product animation.